Hello again. I was contemplating whether to show all my before the start of this video because it's really funny how to get started, how I really get this voice and this stand and the feeling of wanting to start a video and also remembering what I wanted to talk about and stuff. <laughs> well, the point is to be, you know, totally raw and authentic. So I only take once. That's why, and I feel that it's really interesting because using my intuition more and more leaves a lot of room for, you know, unpredictable topics. And, and these are some of the things that really comes to life for me. A lot of times I feel that when I script it, when I prepare something, there is a lot of um, mind work, which is great. But last, the last time I shared, I want my, my heart to be in the lead, right? And most of the time, I actually don't know what it means. <laughs> but the topic today keep coming up. The fact that my worth is not negotiable with anyone. I can, I can listen to opinions. Sometimes I even take it too seriously. But most importantly, what I feel on the inside is really important to me. There are some people out there who are here to really um, serve based on other people's needs. For instance, I can share with you Elon Musk. While I was running in the morning today, I was selecting one of like, sometimes I use a YouTube video to just keep, keep my thoughts, you know, keep me inspired as I run. And I thought I'd choose Elon Musk giving a speech on graduation day, you know, those typical ones. And I realized one thing is that he is very in the right place. I would say he's really in the right place to serve other people's needs. He's all, he was the way he, he did his whole business, right? Is that what can I do for these people? What can I really um, improve in terms of technology for these people? Because to him, creating, inventing is like magic. And, and he likes to be in this space. So that's why he wanted to invent and create and, you know, advance technology for the world. So that's his calling for wanting to find out what other people really need in this world, in the world size. And then he works on it. And then for me, I, I was inspired, but yet I was feeling a little bit like uncomfortable simply because I was not very keen to figure out what other people want. And, and, and honestly, I'm very sick of it. You know, like starting this video, I had quite a, quite a few comments, like, you know, it's really important if you don't just do what you like, you know, you gotta figure out what people wanna hear and wanna do this. All these are very good mind work. And of course, statistically, it seems to be very helpful and effective to the world that they start to monetize this whole system and, and things like that. But I don't think that's what my calling is. Honestly, I don't even feel comfortable going through this. So what I really feel my worth is at this point in time, after this, after walking through so many ups and downs and really figuring out what is it that I really stand for? Who am I? I feel that there's a lot of things that I want to do that comes from within, which there are a lot of people like that too. Yeah, it's always a noble feeling to say that I, I'm here to serve the world and I really want to do this for people. I'm going to create this because I feel that this is what the world needs and stuff like that. Mine is kind of similar, but building from within that I feel what I truly want to express from within is not negotiable with what the world needs to hear or at least wants to hear. At this point in time, in my shallow understanding, I feel that the more I listen to what other people want, the less I feel I can do my job. My job meaning not, not like going to work and stuff, but my job in this world, when I came to live and exist in this world, what was I meant to do? I feel that it's important for me to break through all this societal 
pressure on me thinking that I must do something useful to the society and stuff. It may be true for some, you know, especially for Elon Musk. All right, there are people like that. There will be different team members of this world. There may be six archetypes or more, I don't know, because I'm basing my reference on gene keys once again. But I feel that there are different characters for different things. For example, for me, if I just focus on myself, and figuring out what is it that I really want to say is the start for me. It's, it's like the best thing I can do for this world. I don't know whether it links because I haven't actually really started because I'm always drawn by, drawn. I mean, I've always put my worth on what other people expected. And it's subconscious. Let me give you an example. When... This is very personal. I, I have a younger brother. He's two years younger than me. And he, he is born with Down syndrome. So uh, I found that out. I mean, only when I was 17 because my parents did their part to, to keep the family sane, keep my, my mother and my father's health, um, mental health, healthy and there's really they did everything they could as parents i think i hear from enough parents friends who are parents and also my own parents that they always do things with the best intentions you know whether whether us children we like it or not that's really secondary because that is just an opinion but basically i trust that their intentions are really good so whatever has happened is meant to be because there's endless things to talk about. You can either talk about the pros, the advantages of what has happened or the cons, the disadvantages of what has happened and it goes nowhere. I choose to just feel grateful for this whole situation. Just want to put it out there. And focusing back on my worth. So I I I base my worth quite quite on the relationship that I have with my parents and my brother. So thinking that my brother, you know, probably will not be able to have children, very, very Chinese thinking that I better find a way to be uh, being able to pass down the family name. And turns out, I mean, I did all my my younger day relationship, courtship, like different, different things, you know, countless mistakes, countless fun, countless joy, you know. And it turns out I am bisexual. You know, I'm not, I'm not very concerned about the gender when I love somebody. And it was, it was a secret that I kept inside. I kept it from my parents for a really long while. And I can tell you what are the consequences of that. Quite a bit of damage on me. Is that all my decisions seems to go with the fact that I really need to be responsible and, and give, give my parents grandchildren. And because of that, I think in like my past 30 years maybe, I was really trying to hide who I am, you know. Just a simple fact that I do love without considering gender. It's just a simple sentence. But I didn't tell my parents and that's a huge thing. It's really, really huge. Because can you imagine the daily conversations the, where I tell them I want to go out or I want to stay over at somebody's houses and somebody's house and stuff. I can't really speak my truth. And I'm so concerned about being authentic. I'm so excited about being honest, being truthful. And yet I can't even tell my parents the truth about a simple thing that I'm going to stay over at this person's house. Simply because, oh, maybe I am um, risking the fact that I'm not being able to give them grandchildren. It was so painful. And that escalator, because it, it works parallel, it's not only the fact that it's in my love relationship, it also affects my job, my everything. 
Because I can tell you, for, for instance, if I assume that if I don't be honest, I might get a bad consequence, like maybe I won't, I won't be recognized for my work and stuff. So I choose not to be honest in, in disagreeing, in being myself and feeling for what is really important to be shared. And I compromise and I give in and I choose to agree just to save myself a spot, thinking that that is the best spot that I can have at this moment. All this mind, all this mind work, it is calculated well, I guess, <laughs> from retrospective sense. Because the mind is not easy for the mind to think of the future. I feel that the future comes from the heart, comes from the connection with your spiritual self. Whatever you call it, you know, it could be you could be your God, it could be your universe, could be could be your spiritual self, could be your, your, your own self, but the soul self, anything. But as long as we we have an understanding, you know, what it means. So it's not negotiable. Because every time I negotiate, I, I go even further than that. I just, you know, disassociate and agree so that I can stay in a certain position in my job, in my work, in, in, you know, in my love life, in my life with family. If I choose to do that, it will, it will, has, it, it will have its effects. You know, I, I turned out to be very unhappy just for a simple fact. I will be very unhappy. Even right now, I'm still going through it. Every day, I have to remind myself to not negotiate my worth with others. I negotiate it because there's this strong sense of wanting to belong, right? It's quite a human nature. I myself feel that way. But honestly, I do feel very happy if I'm on my own. And it's not forever. It's the fact that if I want to do something that I really feel for, that I really want to bring it out there to the world, like doing this video, this very video, you know, I, will, I don't want to be so concerned about what other people are thinking. This is just easier said than done, honestly. You know, I, I, can, I, can don't, I can keep on telling myself don't think about what other people say and stuff, but it creeps in. Just like how I didn't even realize that me lying to my parents about staying at other people's house or doing something else, okay, I can't think of anything now, it's a consequence. There's a consequence to it. Is that I start to snowball this entire effect and this dark energy that's inside of me that I feel that I didn't do my job as a human being of being of wanting to express myself honestly and stuff. Because if this is what I'm here to do and I'm going further and further away from it, how happy can I be? How happy can I be? If I earn like a million bucks just because I did this, actually I have no idea how it feels because I don't have earned a, a million bucks for being away from who I truly am. But I can already tell you, I haven't even earned that million bucks and I already don't feel like earning it. So I, I don't know, I don't even know how to get to the part where I earn my million bucks disagreeing with my true self. So that's why. Even though my mind is very concerned, my mind is a very practical uh, tool to help me understand, hey, you gotta earn money, prepare for rainy days, you gotta find a way to provide for your parents and stuff. These are all very true and I respect my mind for it. Honestly, I do. That keeps me on the ball, keeps me uh, alive and having the affordability to do all these things. You know, being able to buy an iPhone even though I don't like it, it was like a thousand eight dollars but what I'm trying to say is that if the thing if there's a way to know what I am here for and being comfortable with it because like I tell you having Elon Musk all these people who are so inspirational and then they do things for the world and stuff it makes me feel bad that I am not interested okay in in doing something that the world wants because I feel that what the world wants or how it has been monetized in this world is not truly what the world wants. It's what everybody is going through, is going into a system, trying to make ends meet, trying to make money to provide. 
without realizing that, without even asking ourselves, are we really doing what we're here to do in the first place? So I have a bit more courage. It's built, you know, it's not that I have wow, alliance courage. And I have a bit more blessing in a way. I've, I've had all my stories. I mean, I only shared the snippets of, of what has happened in my family, as my brother, as my parents. But I feel that I'm still lucky in the sense that I don't have a lot of commitments in my 30s. I'm not sure in my 40s whether I'll have more commitments. But definitely, I managed to stop and reconsider my time here. We all live a mortal life, you know. I have, I have understood of all the organs that we have here, the only degenerative organ is the heart because we are mortal. So if you have any other organs that are degenerating, just be aware and figure it out. What is it that you're doing in your lifestyle? It may not just be eating, you know. It, it, it may not just be your exercise and your lifestyle. It, it's your mindset. There's a lot of things in this world that you can explore and find meaning in it for yourself. If there's a need for me to keep on looking for hard evidence, that means it has proven to that 80% of the people have uh, gotten some reaction from this kind of evidence and stuff, then what if you're the 20%? So it's a great thing to be practical and wanting proof for everything and try to be general in terms of, oh, this is what the people want in order to make me famous. I'm going to speak within five minutes and three objectives and then try to get all my content right in the first place and stuff. It may work for some people. Maybe it will work for people like who have the archetype of Elon Musk. But what if I have the archetype of a famous artist, you know, that no one wants to acknowledge until something great really happens. And it may take a long while. What if it's like that? What if it's like Starry Night? You know, where... Well, it's a very bad example because he died after he did such great work. But it's more like... There are artists that invents something from within who did not give a cahoots about the world yet. Because the faith of knowing that when I create something, it's going to impact the world, is good enough. I never got that. I never understood that. I kept on listening to others. I kept on thinking that, you know, I, I listen to mentors and try to get there. It's all very useful, you know. It's really very useful to have mentors, to have a community, to have a support system and everything. It is still very useful to me. But my base is that I'm an inventor. Is that I have to create something that keeps coming to me. I keep on feeling inspired to do something different. And I'm not trying to be, you know, irritating to the company or anybody like that. But I'm someone who is very interested in breakthroughs. Someone who is very interested to go in detail with something very unique. I love that. I really love that. You know how I can use dance to figure out how, what is my mind thinking and to speak to different people and figuring out, oh, this is what I have, my blind spot. This is, this is the blind spot that I have, sorry uh, for the grammar. But I feel that many things that become systemized like, you know, you try to make it so scalable into like this whole, the whole world can receive it and stuff. Comes from inventors, right? And there are two types of inventors that I talked to, to, about today. One is Elon Musk. 
where he really thinks about what the mass is asking for. And there are people who are like, I guess me, an archetype like that, that we, that I myself feel is important. And I'm not very concerned about whether it's important to everybody yet. And I have the same faith that is important for everybody when I can express it. That's what I feel is really something that I want to share today. And I love for you to get to the end of this video if you can to help you understand or help myself to understand as I talk about this that our worth is not negotiable with anyone. And if I can know my worth deeply with nobody's influence, I think that's fantastic. Super start. And thanks to some encouragement from my friends and family and the fact that I, I took courage to do these videos, I started to see some of the breakthroughs in my work and in my personal life as well, that sometimes it's not about making videos so that I can, you know, be very good at this and stuff, but it's the fact that I'm making videos and I started to release myself in terms of either the mental patterns that has been stuck or, you know, some things that I haven't been able to let go of that helped me to just release, like, you know, like really pooping it out and then get new stuff in. Only if you if your hand is always grasping that that whole stone in your in your hand once you let it go you have the capacity to, to take something else right if you don't want that stone let it go it's not the easiest thing you know to to do it's not as if you really see this in your in your hands and then you do this right there's a lot of work within but stay with it you are the only person who can stay with yourself same for me i stay with it you know, I, I, did, I did quite a few things. My dance is not just so I can be fit. I've been struggling with my, with my image. I always feel that I'm fat and stuff like that. And, you know, it's, it's always fam I'm, I'm, I'm famous for being, feeling like I'm not enough, that kind of thing. So I struggle with it a lot. But you know what dance did? It helped me to understand that it's not just putting in a lot of effort that means exercising non-stop because in the end my masseuse that I went to after one two years of not going and I realized that I injured my calf muscles because I, I ran too much and that helped me to realize exercising alone and being so superficial with that knowledge is not gonna keep my my mortal life healthy you know it's not exercising it's how I have made use of exercise to really release my stress, for one. Number two, from that understanding that exercise makes me lose weight, how do I break it down further or, or help myself to enjoy it more? For instance, if dance is not going to make me sweat so much, like a Muay Thai, does it mean that I cannot lose or I cannot maintain my weight. Only if I work hard and sweat a lot, then I can maintain that this image impossible. Because what dance can do is what exercise cannot do. I mean like running is what running cannot do. Because dance allows me to really open up the different muscles around me. And it's not just my calf muscles doing the work and some of my thigh muscles and then the rest will just shake around and then start to sweat. No, it's not a cardio thing. It is a lot about releasing. And you know, our muscles have so much memory, okay? I don't know if you experienced it before, but there will be times when when you touch a certain area or you hurt yourself a certain area and you get reminded of a story that you used to hurt in the same place or anything like that, that happened to me. And I realized that if when I go for dance and I start to release the tightness in my muscles, I really feel better. And I used to have some tightness in the knees and even feel some pain when I walk up and down the stairs. 
but because of dance and dance my contemporary dance has a bit of jam has a bit of you know movement that is not so yoga like in a sense so and i realized all the pain is gone plus the fact that i went for massage because i understood the very thing about exercise it's not about sweating only it's about helping the body to release itself to improve the flow overall okay and in naruto sense it's like the chakra needs to be ever flowing everywhere right but chakra has been used in many senses as well but i feel that that is the essence of it it's it's not just using a term and then just blindly allow your brain to to just systemize it is that with everything that we do it can be a routine every day okay i can keep on running every day keep on dancing every two every two two times a week and stuff it's growing in awareness and making videos like this really helped me to grow in my awareness in a accelerated form because if, if i keep everything in my head right i can't really remember but when i do videos like this conversing with you i can you know crystallize it some people go through journaling and stuff which is not as crystallizing for me and i feel that yeah i i i'm doing this so that it's really it's my personal journal but i feel so compelled to share this message with you too so yeah i'm checking out and i thank you very much and i hope that you might be able to sense this subtle meaning that i've been giving to you and myself okay so i see you soon bye bye